Alright, so I have a Nintendo Switch here. I've been repairing a few of these uh, lately. And I don't. Initially, I, was, I didn't really want to do these things just because they're just. I don't. I don't really know much about them. Seems like there's multiple points of failure. And, uh. And that was that. But it seems like we know a little bit more about these things now. And they're actually not too bad. Not too hard to disassemble. And. The repair is not too bad, so I think it's I think this is something that is uh, definitely doable in terms of uh, uh, I guess maybe I don't know running a profitable business. <laughs> I mean this is a viable repair I think. So and I've kind of learned a few things along the way um, of the repairs that I've done so far, and so I'm just gonna kind of tell you guys what I've learned so far. <laughs> Uh, maybe hopefully it'll save you some time in repairing these things. Okay, so almost always it's no power, um, and they're sent to us. So first thing I always do is just check this, check the port here, just to see if you see any physical damage. If you see physical damage, then obviously replace the charge port. It should be back in business. So let's take a look under a microscope. So here's the charge port under a scope, and you can see that the pins are definitely bent inwards, touching ground, and all that garbage. Um, so charge port definitely has to be replaced. And I think what's going on with these things is I'll show you after I disassemble it. But um, one of these power lines is, is shorting out, which is causing one of these some of the chips to be damaged as well. Um, but we will check that out after I disassemble it. Um, I, I'm not gonna like. I don't think I'm gonna. Maybe I'll see if I can like disassemble it on camera, and then I'll just fast forward, speed it up like ten times or something like that. Because uh, you can find tutorials on how to do it and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll do that. So basically, all the screws are silver except for four, four black screws, and, the, and all the surface screws are pretty much the same size. So just make note of the four black screws. There's one below this, this copper thing right here, and then the other three you'll see where they are. And so just make note of those. Okay, so now that the logic board is disassembled, I just want to talk about a few things. One is, okay, okay. the first thing is, there's a heat sink here, and um, there's some heat sink putty, or I don't know what it's called, but anyways, you definitely want to wipe the old stuff off, and when you, when you reassemble it, wipe the old stuff off and put, a, put some new ones back. And, and... The one that everybody, or the one that I use is, let's see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's thermal Arctic MX4 Thermal Compound. Uh, I think it's like 10 bucks. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe less than 10 bucks. But anyways, this this thing, just wipe that off, put it on, and you should be good to go. Um, the second thing to note is that there's a there's this thing right here, which is which is um, the game card reader. But in addition to that, they actually put a touch chip on here. So this chip right here handles the touch, and this flex right here um, goes into here, and that's basically the digitizer. So if you turn it on and and the touch doesn't work, then this chip handles that. Okay. Um, another thing is so let's see. Another thing is this right here is the LCD. I believe, I believe it's this one right here. I believe it's let's see. I believe it's this one right here. That is the LCD um, light. So in order to test this thing, um, you need the battery. You need this flex, and you need the touch in order for to 
test to test it with minimal function. Um, and I think that's it. So, oh, another thing is be careful with this LCD connector right here. This is the LCD connector. Um, because what's been happening is that some of these pins in here, when you put the flex back in, they'll kind of like push it. They'll kind of like squeeze it out and uh, mess up the connector. So, anyways, if you want to, just be very careful with this one because I've messed up a few connectors already. But I've had to replace that, which which is not horrible, but you know, it just takes another whatever 15, 20 minutes of your time. And the whole point of these things is to do it fast and efficiently. Um, so I think that's it. I think I think the power flexes. One of the power flexes is one of these two. I'm not exactly sure. So if you you know if you want to test it with the power button plug these two in and these are these two are for the speakers so those aren't required for testing and hmm, I think that's it really I think that's it those are the important things and so anyways disassembling was 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 fairly easy it probably took less than 10 minutes um, okay so let's go under the microscope take a look okay so here's the logic board under the scope um so the HDMI or the USB USB C charge board is here, which we know we're gonna have to replace. And another common cause of failure is this uh, chip right here called the MT M ninety two T thirty six. Alright, this is a pretty common point of failure here. Um and I'll just I guess I'll just kinda go over it right now, but basically what you do is you just diode mode this this little chip right here. Uh, basically use diode mode the capacitors around it. So red to ground, black to to these, uh, actually that might not be ground. Is it ground? Yeah that is ground, okay. So basically you just diode mode all these capacitors around here and see if there's anything that's short on both sides. Like this one right here is short. Yeah let's see, this one is both short. So I can already, well what we're gonna do is it's possible that it's the charge port that's causing the short so what we're gonna do is replace the charge port because we know that's busted and um, and then hopefully <laughs> the short will be gone hopefully the short will be gone so it's possible that yeah it's possible the charge port is causing the short it's because it looks like that's the only one that's short Everything else is testing good. So basically, you're just checking both sides and just make sure both both sides don't, don't say zero. And in this case, both sides do say zero on this one capacitor here. So first things first. Okay, so that's one point of failure. Another point of failure that I've seen is, um, well, that I've never seen, but they say that this coil over here goes bad. So basically, just diode mode both sides of the coil and make sure it's not grounded on one side. Yeah, so this is 0.37, and then there's some blue on this, so you just have to get past the blue, and then let's see. Okay, that's 0.37 as well, so that's good. Um, and then one other thing that I do, um, there's like some six-legged transistor here. I'm not even sure if that's necessary or not, but you can download mode these three right here, and just make sure that well, this one's not. They're not supposed to be short here, but I think I suspect that some of these pins are bent, which is causing the short, you know. So just diode mode these and they should all be right around 0.50. Alright, this one's this one right now is showing short, but that's only because this connector is busted. Alright, so I mean there's really not not much else to it. We're just gonna go ahead and replace this charge port now. And I'll show you kind of the method that I use to replace it. So I don't really do much to it. I mean I just you know, I just do the usual, which is capped on this. And one thing you might want to do is actually take this uh, water damage sticker off and put it back later because when we remove this, although I don't think we can do that actually. So, anyways, once we start taking the charge board off, yeah, this is not meant to be removed and put back. Well, actually, eh, maybe we can do that. Okay, so we'll just put this aside over here, okay? Because if you try to heat, it's going to get damaged if you um, if you muck with it. Uh, so basically, I just try to cap on a little bit of everything, and then um, I'm gonna flux it up a little bit. I'm gonna flux it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna hey Google, turn smoke on. So I'm at 400 degrees. 
Celsius and airflow of um, 100. All right, on my quick 861DW, and not a whole lot to this. Just gonna, like I said, high heat, and then as soon as it lifts up, I'm just gonna lift it up, and I'm gonna use some heavier tweezers. So I'm not using my Hako tweezers. I'm using this this big big thing right here. Four hundred degrees and sixty. What is it? Hundred, hundred airflow. That's what I'm using. And I may need to turn this up, but I think I think it'll be okay. We'll see. Yeah, I'll probably need to turn this up. Alright, let's turn it up. Let's go to like... Well... Let's go to 4... Sorry about the static. 450. I'm just gonna go up quick. Cause I don't think... I don't think like high heat's really... Cause I'm directing all the flow away anyway, so I don't think the high heat's gonna affect much of anything except for burn up this connector, which is already damaged. So, I'm just gonna high heat this mother. Oh, it's still gonna be at 100. Oops. High heat, high airflow. There you go. That was pretty simple. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So that was fairly simple. This thing is dead. Uh, let's go back to the scope here. No rip pads or anything. Um, okay, so I guess one of the biggest issues with this thing are these stupid little holes here. You know, you want to you want to be able to clear these holes up so that you can stick the new connector in. You know. And um, they're actually a little more challenging than you would ever imagine. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use some wick here and, and just to get all the old stuff off. I don't know what everybody else does to clean these things, but I'll show you my method in a little bit here. So some of these you can just kind of like. You can kind of use your tweezers to kind of with some wick and clear it up. Like these, the these two right here, I think maybe. Um. Anyways, ground pads you generally require a lot, way more heat than you would ever imagine. Oh, I'm sorry, I was cleaning this one. Okay, so these are going to be a little bit easier to clean. Um, let's see, this one. Yeah, see, these are fairly easy. No problem. For the most part. So, no problemo. The wick is working, doing its job. No problemo. Okay, but these are, these are really hard. So... Um, best way to do it is actually just to get your tweezers and use your hot air station actually and uh, just do as if you were taking it off there you go see, see how it's melting and just use your tweezers and just kind of poke down on them very gently Uh, I guess we can do this one first. You don't want to break it, so just be careful. And just create that, create the little gap. There you go, that's one. And then you can kind of go back to it. Definitely use a little flux. Go back to it and kind of clean it up a little bit with your uh,
Uh, that's not really working too well. Well, it's not great. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I'm still trying to kind of hone my method here. Well, that one's good. I should probably turn it over, so maybe I'll just do that. And this is probably going to be the thing that actually takes the fucking freaking longest to do. Okay, so those are pretty pretty good right there. All right. Um so let's see what we can do about these. I think I think what I'm going to do is push it push it to the other side and then use my use some clean okay so okay I don't know, really know where I left off but uh, because I think the video cut out on me <laughs> it's getting kind of boring um, anyways I just tinned the inside pads here because we're not going to be able to I don't know if you can see it or not but I just tinned the inside pads here because we're gonna have to use heat to get those on all right and that's really the only way we're gonna be able to do it so tin it put a little flux and then we're gonna have to fit the connector on here and here's the new connector you can't really see it but it's I'm actually gonna tin the actual connector a little bit too just so that inside at least just so that it'll kind of fit All right, well, you can't really see what I'm doing, but anyways, I'm just tinning the inside row of the connector, and then hopefully this thing will kind of slide through and it'll fit fine. Um, so, okay, so it looks like it's sitting, you know, flat enough. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use some fairly low heat. Um, I'm going to go down to about 325 here and turn down the airflow to about, Let's say 50. Alright, so 325 and 50 and uh, flood it with flux. And so basically the goal is to get the inside row. Um, shit. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing or not, but anyways, get the inside row. Solder the inside row without burning the, the plastic, the black plastic. <laughs> so that's really the challenge. So maybe this is the second hardest thing. So I'm just going to kind of gently push down here. And like I said, I'm at 325 and 50. And just, you're just looking for this black thing to make sure that it doesn't burn up. If that starts to melt, then pull back or and then turn the heat lower, okay? And then if it's not burning up, you can kind of ease into it a little bit meaning like when, if you see this starting to melt that means we're, we're getting we're doing pretty good so so I'm just gonna go a little closer since I don't see the black stuff burning you know and you might have to turn the heat up just a little bit
You guys see it melting just a little bit? I think I'll have to turn it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go three three like forty five. Put a little more flux. All right, so let's just take a look, see if it's okay or not. I don't, I really don't know. And sometimes we can't really see what's going on with it, but maybe we can kind of get a glimpse of whether these connectors have worked or not. So it doesn't look good actually. I mean, if anything, it looks like it's kind of barely hanging on by thread. Um, yeah, so this is not good enough. Uh, I'm going to have to put a little more work into this. Um, probably just hot, hotter, a little higher heat. Yeah, it sucks. So after after several tries, I still haven't really got it. Done a great job of figured out a great way to do this yet. But I'm just gonna kind of like flood it with flux, turn the heat up a little bit. So I'm gonna throw it 370 with air. I'm gonna turn the airflow down just a little bit to 40. And I think you can probably heat it from the back side too. But I'm going to do it from the top side. Definitely don't want to break this damn thing. Good. Damn it. I can feel the connections kind of broke off. So, you know what? Let's put this back on the. Sorry, I'm making a little bit of a mess of this damn thing. Because it still is very awkward to do, even though I've done a few of these already. And I'm still kind of learning.
<laughs> Maybe I should just burn this mother up. Uh, let's let's try. F f you know what? Let's try high heat. Or let's try high airflow. Let's go back to 100. 400 and 100. Alright, that's gotta be good at this point. Although I think I bent the board a little bit, but... Well, sorry about this boring ass video, but uh, let's see. So basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check this, make sure it's not short. Okay, it's not short anymore. And then let's go back here and check this one, make sure this is not short. So this is actually still short. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to replace this puppy too. That's kind of like the the drawback of this shit. All right. So that kind of sucks. You know, now it's keep talking about a viable repair <laughs> now these chips are about eight bucks each um, not horrible but anyways I'll show you how to replace this this, this is not a horrible repair here um, replacement I mean this chip right here you just have to kind of lift and then lift and replace basically just note the dot dots in the bottom left there yeah, I'm, I'm stuck 400 and 1, 400 and 100. Alright, so... Alright, I'm not going to do much else to that, uh, but let me go get a chip real quick. Alright, so I think I botched it actually. I think it's actually this chip that's bad. And this one is labeled P... what is it? P... P13 USB. And you can find one of these chips on... Um, I think Mauser. So this is short. And this is short, yeah. So anyways, if that capacitor is short, it's this chip, not the other one. <laughs> so I need to replace that one. And I need to finish this finish up this USB port. So I guess that there goes my my thing about um this being an easy repair, right? But I guess Oh, looks like it's like burnt. You see that? Yeah, look, it's damaged, it's burnt. Right here, it's all burnt. Okay, so that should have been my first clue, but at least I can get to use the other chip back. Um, okay, so let's just go at it, man. Forget about it. I mean, let's just get this thing done. Stop mucking around. Um, just note that dot 
<sighs> right here. That's where the dot is. This sucks. Four hundred and one hundred dot right here. Alright, before we do anything, let's just check this uh, capacitor again, make sure both sides aren't still short. Yeah, it's not short anymore, so it's definitely that. Okay, so it looks like it was actually, oh wow, you see it? This is actually burnt, right here. So this right here is burnt. And I'm just gonna leave that there, man. That thing is all busted. Alright, let me go get one of these chips. So, stock up on these biatches. This is probably not going to work after I'm done with it. Piece of shit. I am running out of time here. It's not even, uh, it's not even even. I think at this time you should probably just throw away everything I just said about this being a viable, easy repair. The fucking work. Every time I make a uh, video, this is what happens.
the hell the hell is that missing one? Get that. I don't even know if this is the right chip. Fuck. <laughs> uh, this is turning out to be a night fucking near. You know what? Let's just take it from a donor, a donor phone. Screw this. Take this off. This thing's no good, it's missing a pin. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so I'm not exactly sure where I left this off, but basically, let's see, I'll just kind of talk about what I did, but, um, because I'm still learning about these things myself, but this is a donor board right here. And what ended up happening was that, let's see, that, I don't know if you can see it, but that capacitor right there was shorted on both sides. And that is actually a tell that this chip right here, the P13 USB chip, is not good. Not the M92 T36. Alright, and if you want to find out where to, where to best source these parts, like the charge port, this chip and uh, this chip. Just go to microsoldering.com, click on parts and supplies. I think that's what it is. Um, anyways, so you can you can so that was shorted right there. This little dot right here, and then this capacitor right there was shorted. All right, and then this big capacitor on the back side was also shorted. Okay, so those are all tells that this chip is bad. So in addition to the charge to the charge port, this chip was bad. All right. Um, okay, so what I ended up doing was just taking it from a donor because the one I think the one that I was putting on was was not the right one. <laughs> I ended I bought those on I don't know where I bought those eBay or something like that. Those are not good. So I just took it from a donor and um and then I you know I took this one off so I just I went ahead and just put that same chip back and it was fine. And there's not a whole lot to it. I mean just lift, put a new one on. You don't you probably don't even really have to touch it up at all. Uh, because the pads are on the bottom, you know, so just make sure there's enough heat and it's hot enough, and and uh, there aren't there aren't any um, corroded pads, so you d you definitely want to touch up the pads on the chip before you put it back on, uh, chip and the logic board. Okay, so put that back, put it put a donor one on, and it's charging now. Uh, it's I'm charging this from a USB ammeter and it's charging at 0.6 amps. I think that's normal. Once it boots up, it should go up to about one something amps. Um, I've already put another battery on here and and uh, and tested it out, touch works and stuff like that. And I haven't tested anything else yet because um, I just I just put all the speakers back and all that stuff and, and this board back and stuff like that. And I did I did put some of that uh, dielectric um, paste back on here so that it's good. So basically, it's just charging now. And once it boots up, then I'll test everything. And I'll kind of I'll kind of walk you through what to test uh, after I put it back up um, alright so anyways I'm just gonna let it sit now and that took way way longer than I expected it to take uh, but I think I'm getting better at diagnosing these things um, so anyways when you take on one of these repairs don't don't just um, think that it's probably it's gonna be only a uh, uh, USB-C problem because I think what's going on is that once when those pins bend, they also short out one of these chips. So um, that is that. Uh, I will update after this thing boots up and I test everything. All right. Gosh, this turn it. This this has got to be a two-hour long video. It's going to turn out to be one of Jess's videos. It is. Let's see, charged up now. Uh, it says console battery low, but I can see that the ammeter says that it's pulling 1.6 amps, so it's definitely charging. Uh, and it wasn't turning on before, so it's just going to take a little while to charge. Um, so, anyways, let's see. 
So test the touch. Um tech check Wi-Fi. You know, the strangest thing is for the longest time I was like trying to click this. I'm like nothing's going on, but you have to click internet settings. And just make sure that it sees all the networks that it's supposed to see. So that looks pretty good. Um, and then last thing is, you know, if you have the Joy Joy-Con controllers, you can see if all the buttons work and stuff like that. Check the sounds. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Controllers and sensors. And what I always do is I just touch the. Sorry. Let's see. What is it? The <sighs> test input devices. And then test the touch screen. And just make sure there's no like dead spots or anything like that. And that's it. So everything is good. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna let this charge up for a little bit, and this this repair is done. Sorry, I didn't I didn't capture everything, but it was one of those moments where um, you're just like you know you're we're spending all this time, and you're just kind of gibbering, and and at some point you're just like okay, let me just let me get this thing done. So I kind of turn off the camera a little bit. Um, and sometimes I sometimes I can't fix it, and sometimes I can. Um, so uh, in this instance, I did fix it. And I guess what I wanted to talk about from the previous video was, and if you're still following this, we're probably about an hour in now. But um, uh, you know, part of starting a business is finding um, a viable business. Um, like in this instance, it would be repairs, you know. So I see a lot of people doing like CPU swaps and NAND swaps and all that garbage right now, and and I'm not really sure what to think about that, you know. I mean, can you imagine having a business based off of CPU swaps? Can you imagine how um what what a life you would have <laughs> trying to trying to maintain that business since the failure rate is so ridiculously bad? Someone's calling. All right, so what was I getting at? Um, I was just going to talk about the the business in general. Um, I've been doing this for about three years now, and I see people. I still have yet to date to attempt a CPU um, swap, even though I see a lot of people doing it these days. And you know, they post on they post on these Facebook groups, and so yeah, it was awesome, you know. And but I don't think people. I don't think they tell people <laughs> the the. Um, the trials and tribulations of you know what it took to get there and that's what people a lot of times people don't see you know in these Facebook groups a lot of times people just post their successes but not so much their failures and with CPU swaps I've never even done it so I guess maybe it's not fair for me to like talk about it but talk you know in depth about it but I just know that the failure rate is probably pretty high on, on, on those things you know um, meaning, you know, you can spend hours attempting this thing, but um, a lot of times they go back, they go directly back to the customer unrepaired. Meaning, you know, if you have no fix, no fee, you, you get nothing for it. You know, and in my mind, you know, that's not that's not really a viable uh, business. You know, unless you have another source of income or something like that. You know, so it's it's not even really something I really want to even get into. Um, I mean, maybe. Maybe you know. I think everything kind of starts out hard. Uh, I think even like the touch ICs turn out hard, and I can probably do those in 15 minutes now. Uh, same with audio ICs. Uh, they were they were pretty challenging initially, um, and now I can do them in somewhere between 14 and 16 minutes at best. You know, assuming no complications. Um. So, but CPU swaps, I just don't really ever see that <laughs> becoming something that is uh, I just don't ever see that becoming something that is doable basically um, I mess this up see it's supposed to be black 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 okay I think I messed this up anyways it's not a big deal so what else was I going to talk about okay I guess that Industry has a little, kind of evolved a little bit. Um, I'm doing, I'm doing different repairs now. <laughs> when I say different, it's really uh, different. Uh, 
maybe not a different business model. I'm still doing a lot of these single single one off repairs here. Um, still have a good amount of business uh, customers that bring stuff to the to the shop or mail it in, and they get they get a pretty nice discount. Um, and then there's also this, uh, which I haven't really talked about, mainly because I don't want people. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't. I guess I don't want to create competition. A lot of times, a lot of times I don't talk about things because I don't really want to create competition for myself, you know. <laughs> but I guess one thing is uh, bulk bulk repairs. That's a that's a pretty uh, good thing right now. Um, not not good in the sense of uh, the work, because the work is boring as hell. But uh, bulk audio IC repairs, bulk touch IC repairs. Um, at at this point, it's mainly it's mainly hold on I need to go outside do something alright I don't know where I was at but basically bulk audio IC repairs for cheap and um, it's it's really really boring work because you're doing tons of tons and tons of audio ICs but uh, in terms of from a business standpoint it's actually not a bad revenue stream <laughs> um, and I think I'll just leave it at that. But um, so that's one idea, you know. And then another idea is I don't know if you're I don't know if you're struggling or not, but I'm just kind of talking about random stuff. Um, but let's see. Another thing is basically passive income. You know, I I really that's kind of where I came from is passive income. I mean, making money when you're not really working, meaning like you can put the work up front. And make money. There's a lot of affiliate marketing guys out there. Um, that's where that's basically where I came from, affiliate marketing. And that's kind of how I built this business actually. Um, you know, get a good domain name, SEO, get up to the top. You get your your you know, you can pretty much build any business with a good marketing technique, right? With a good marketing plan. And and it's really not the other way around. I mean you can have an awesome business plan and if you can't get customers, you're not you're not you're not getting anywhere. You know, you have to get the customers first, and then, or you have to figure out a way to get the customers, and then you can build whatever freaking business you want. You know, I mean, I I didn't think that I'd I'd be doing a micro soldering thing uh, three years ago, but but uh, it just happens to be that I got a little bit lucky when I entered the mark enter, entered the business, and um, and you know that's kind of how it how it went. Um. I was doing something very, very different than what I'm doing right now. Before this, it was actually it was affiliate marketing, but um, yeah, very, very different. So, so let's see, what else are we talking about? What else can we talk about? Because I'm almost done putting this back together. Um, had a, had some things I wanted to talk about, but I guess. I guess there's a lot of people doing what we're doing right now, micro soldering versus you know three years ago, and I'm sure some people are probably struggling to get business, and that is really the hardest part of any business. You know, I'll keep yapping about that, but um, I don't know what else to talk about. Anyways, you can just watch me put this back together. And if I think of something, I'll talk about it. So I'm probably nearing about an hour now. <laughs> Not that exciting. I'm gonna try to up my game a little bit too, my uh, YouTube game a little bit. I don't think I'll ever show my face on camera, but that's only because of personal preference. I don't really wanna plaster my face everywhere um, because I don't really wanna see someone's face on my YouTube channel. I mean like when I'm trying to figure out how to do something I, I can care less about someone's face so that's kind of why I'm doing this. It's not that I don't want to show my pretty face. <laughs> uh, I, I just don't feel like it's necessary when I'm teaching other people how to do things. Okay so this thing is back in business. Let's see, see if we can get a green bar now. Okay we got a green bar so we know it's kind of going up. Can you see it or not? There you go. Oops, you can't see it. All right, so green bar. So I have this big ring light coming, so it should make things brighter, hopefully. 
and oh man, let's see what else. Where are we? Let's see what are we doing from here? Um, I don't really know where we're going from here. Um, industry is maturing, and it's a natural phase of any business. Um, you just have to ask yourself if you're well positioned um, in this industry or not, and kind of go from there. Um, let's see, I guess maybe micro soldering supply. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, the guy that runs it, I think his name is Jason Gann. You know, I know it's Jason Gann. It used to be at least. And I remember early on when I was buying stuff from him, um, the guy would. It would take him a few days to ship stuff out, and he wouldn't respond to emails, and you know, he'd question him about it, and, and he's just kind of like he was probably off doing something, you know, and just didn't really take the business seriously, you know, and and uh, you know, it's okay, it's okay. I mean, if that's what he wants to do, but I just ended up just not supporting the guy anymore because you know I can't order something and have it ship three days later. So this is very very early on. So I just ended up just just not buying from anymore because I just don't I just don't want to support businesses that that don't um that aren't serious about what they do, you know, and in in this case it was very, very evident early on that he didn't really care, you know, this wasn't a priority of his, you know. And apparently I don't know what happened to it. I don't think anybody knows what happened to his site, but his site his site is still there. Somebody's running it. Nobody knows who. And it's just uh you know uh, I think I think the business model was was somewhat failed in the beginning, anyways, because I think the profit margins are not very great on these things. But I don't really know enough about them. But um, that's one of the reasons why why we don't sell sell this stuff on our website. But you know, then you have somebody like Mobile Centrics. You know, profit margins aren't great on on their website either. But they actually do very well because because of volume. So so the point is you early on you kind of have to pick and choose you know you have to choose whether you're going to go the volume route with low profit margins or you're going to go somewhere in in the middle or somewhere you know high profit margin and lower volume um uh that th that doesn't that may work for a little while but that probably won't work for the long term it's unsustained long term uh and then you know, ultimately, ultimately, you still have to factor marketing in there. Meaning, um, you know, someone like Mobile Centrics. You know, I don't think they really do any marketing, really. But you know, everybody just kind of talks about them. And says, oh yeah, there you go. You know, buy them here. They're they're quick, reliable. Their return policy is awesome, and they're cheap. You know, and so they don't really have to do any marketing. You know, but then. You have a site like, um, I guess maybe my site, I don't know. Uh, there's always people doing it for less on eBay. <laughs> uh, but the question is, who are they going to find first? You know, are they going to find this guy on eBay first or are they going to find me first? You know, and, and, uh, and hopefully. You know, you, you kind of that's who you that's what that's the marketing that I'm talking about is you fight for that customer first. Um, but ultimately, you also the underlying foundation is that you also have to have, I think, probably good customer service and, um, in my mind, quick turnaround times. You know, and you have to be capable. Meaning, you know, you can't have a 30% failure rate or something like that. Um, all right, now I feel like I'm kind of just rambling, but anyways, maybe. One of these days, I'll just kind of talk a little bit more about just about everything in general, which I feel like I've kind of done this video, which has nothing to do with this Nintendo Switch repair. <laughs> but I said I'd talk about it in the last video. So, anyways, I'll stop yapping now. Um, so, you're gonna, I'm gonna do a promo video with our online course. If you want to learn how to do this, you can buy the course. It's a hundred bucks. It looks like we're up as of today our rating on this course is 4.5 out of 5 stars so that's pretty good um, uh, we just added the audio IC section on there which is a little bit long overdue but uh, but we did add it indeed and uh, at some point we're gonna do a data recovery like a comprehensive data recovery but I still don't feel like I'm very very great at it which is why you know it's hard to like talk about something Unless you're, unless I feel like you're pretty confident and you're pretty good at it, you know. With data recovery, there's a lot of moving parts, and um, 
you know, uh, there's a lot to learn about it, you know, and I haven't even done a CPU swap yet, right? So who am I to, who am I to teach someone else about data recovery? Um, okay, so I'm going to end this video because it's going to be like 10 hours long and I need to get some work done. Uh, but if you've stayed stuck with me until now, thank you. <laughs> if not, F you! No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Alright, I'll be back in another video and I'll go on another long, long rant at some other point. Thanks for watching. Peace. I just want to say thank you for watching our videos on YouTube. Um, you know, when I started micro soldering about three or four years ago, probably about three years ago, um, I started because I ended up breaking someone's phone during a repair. Yeah, this was back in the days of the iPhone 5C, and as I was disconnecting the battery, I accidentally pried off one of the little components next to the battery connector. So my options were to try to try to fix it or to buy buy the customer a new phone and and that's kind of what started this journey well fast forward three years later um, we have a website now microsoldering.com and we also have an online training course um, it's ninety nine ninety nine if you buy it through our website and we go over just about everything that you need to know to get started on your micro soldering journey um, it's uh, kind of sectioned out into about four parts and uh, the first part we just kind of go over all the basics and tools how to use diode mode um, and what kind of tools and equipment to buy and stuff like that the second part we talk a little bit about ZXW tools and in the third part we go over four of the most common repairs let's update this it should be four common most so it's basically no touch no backlight no power and we just added a section for audio IC on the iPhone 7 and 7 plus and then the last part is data recovery no boot and just kind of a very basic um, uh, discussion about data recovery so if you want to buy it just go to microsoldering.com click on store shop and then you'll come to this um, this uh, page right here just click on buy at Udemy and that'll take you to Udemy where our course is hosted um, and you can even preview some videos of the course and see if you like it or not and right now it's we're at four and a half hours and we're adding to it um, as much as we can so uh, just make sure you go through our website otherwise the cost is a little bit higher alright thanks for watching